Good evening. Welcome to QT Web News. Good evening. Fire authorities are continuing to monitor large grass fires in Queensland's northwest. While no homes are under immediate threat, the blaze serves as a timely reminder for the whole state as we enter bushfire season. As fire and rescue crews work to contain grass fires in Mount Isa, residents are being warned of the fire dangers which come with the start of spring. Authorities say conditions are set to continue for the next few days. There is a very high fire uh, danger for the northwest district also and high temperatures, strong winds and dry conditions are expected. Experts say it's the perfect conditions for bushfires. Winds are the, one of the main factors, the, the amount of drying uh, as well. After two years of La Nina conditions bringing higher than average rainfall, weather forecasters are predicting a shift back to an El Nino weather pattern. At the moment, Conditions are in the average area, sort of like we having looking at average season, but there's a slight tendency that it will shift towards the El Nino conditions later this year. Bushfire season doesn't only pose threats to homes and properties. For some, the smoke and haze can lead to severe health problems. In particular, those with respiratory illnesses such as asthma. Sufferers are being urged to take precautions during this season. It's one of the most important things is to actually avoid bushfire smoke if at all possible. So if you are in an affected area to actually seal up your home, seal up your car as much as possible. Certainly don't go exercising outside. Zach Street, QUT News. An independent review into the 2011 flood disaster has praised the actions of engineers who manage dam water releases. The report says the engineers acted in line with objectives in the Wyvernhoe and Somerset dam manuals. It concluded that even if the engineers had taken a different path, the outcomes would not have been materially different. The review also found the weather forecasting capability was on level with international standards. The case involving the alleged murder of Alison Baden Clay was back before the Brisbane Magistrates Court today. Gerard Baden Clay is charged with the murder. And a date has now been set to begin hearing evidence from witnesses. Ten days after she had been reported missing by her accused killer and husband, Jared Baden Clay, the body of 43-year-old Alison Baden Clay was found at a creek, 14 kilometres from her Brookfield home. This morning, her accused murderer's trial is one day closer after the Crown confirmed they had finalised their evidence against Mr Baden Clay. Earlier this month, the court had been adjourned to allow the prosecution to collect a final five key statements, which completed a brief of 466 pieces of evidence against Baden Clay. Today, Crown Prosecutor Danny Boyle confirmed this final evidence, which includes an autopsy report and statements from the principal investigators, has been collected. While Baden Clay himself was not in court this morning, defence lawyer Mr Darren Mahoney asked that the dates be set aside for any pre-committal hearings to avoid the matter being postponed until after the holidays. Baden Clay remains in custody after he was refused bail on the 22nd of June. Now that all of the evidence has been collected, the committal hearing is set to begin. The next appearance will be on the 5th of November in the Brisbane Magistrates Court. David DeWitt, QUT News. A body has been found in Moreton Bay during a search for a 61-year-old man missing after he fell from a dinghy. Water Police and the Coast Guard had carried out a full-scale search for the man last night and today. It's a fishing trip that went awfully wrong. Three men left Russell Island in their dinghy yesterday at midday but failed to reach Dunwich safely. Uh, about 8.30pm last night, a uh, gentleman um, um, fell from a boat uh, around the Dunwich area in Moreton Bay. Um, the gentleman he was with had a quick search, were unable to locate him and then um, made their way to the Dunwich Police Station and raised the alarm. It's believed the boat's outboard had stalled and the man simply lost his balance and fell overboard when the men attempted to restart the engine. They tried to get an oar and uh, extend the oar out to him, but unfortunately he was unable to grab that. When they started the boat again, they tried to motor back to where they believed he was and uh, he was unable to be located. The Coast Guard searched through the night for the missing man who wasn't wearing a life jacket. A body was found by a passing vessel washed up on Peel Island today at around 12.30. Police are yet to identify the deceased but are continuing their investigations. Caitlin Jones, QUT News. The first day of school holidays has seen plenty of activities to entertain the kids. The Red Bank Rail Workshop is hosting Circus Train, while the Maritime Museum is catering to all the little pirates out there. 
Brisbane turned on the warm weather today to kick off the school holidays. The Queensland Maritime Museum is running Pirate Week for the first time. The kids seem to love it. Um, Pirate Pete was the, uh, the star of the show and uh, the kids really got involved and uh, engaged with that sort of show, so that, that set the tone for the day. If you're looking for somewhere to just relax with the kids, Southbank Parklands is the perfect spot. With multiple playgrounds, activities and workshops as part of the Brisbane Festival, it's a great place for parents to take time out too. i have come today and we've gone for a swim in the pool. So always carry bathers wherever you go because <laughs> you never know when you'll come across a pool. In Ipswich, the Workshop Rail Museum is hosting Circus Train running from September 15 to October 14. Activities operate from 9.30 to 5 daily, featuring creative workshops, tours, shows and circus train rides. Enthusiasts say trains played a significant role in Queensland entertainment in the past. Well, we've got the circus train event here at the Workshops Rail Museum for the school holidays. And what a lot of people don't know about rail in Queensland is that trains were very instrumental in taking circuses and other forms of entertainment to regional areas in Queensland. The Brisbane libraries are running a range of activities for kids over the school holidays. Parents, you can keep them busy with art and craft, science and a range of performances as part of the Brisbane Festival. Emily Gilman, QT News. In sport, Swans ruckman Shane Mumford has been cleared to play in this Saturday's AFL Grand Final. The match review panel rejected allegations that he targeted Chris Dawes' injured knee during the preliminary final against Collingwood. It didn't take long for an investigation to clear Shane Mumford of any wrongdoing during last Friday's match against the Pies, leaving the Swans a clear run to the All-Birds finals face-off against the Hawks. Hawthorne are still facing doubts about the fitness of their skipper, Luke Hodge, who was quarantined over the weekend with gastro. He was back in training today. Teammates are adamant that he'll play at the MCG. So I'm sure a few of his colleague mates would have been getting into him for missing a game uh, with the sniffles, but um, you know, he's, uh, he looks great this morning and, and uh, he's ready to go. Saturday's match seems to be as close a race as tonight's Brownlow medal presentation. The Gold Coast's Gary Ablett, Richmond's Trent Cotchen and Essendon's Joe Watson have been identified as joint favourites, but there is no clear frontrunner. In the NRL, the Canterbury Bulldogs admit Melbourne has the advantage of experience in the lead-up to this week's grand final. They are an experienced bunch down there and you know, also the players, but you know, Coach Craig will have them you know, ready for the game on Sunday. But Turner says the Doggies will meet the Storm's triple threat of Cronk, Slater and Smith head-on, with the support of their very vocal crowd to carry them through to victory. Rachel Kramer, QT News. Good evening. Time now to take a look at the weather. Today we saw little sun, but plenty of overcast skies. Early morning fog patches covered the city. Temperatures in the southeast today and overnight it stayed quite warm. Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast only reached a low of 18 and mid-teens on the Golden Sunshine Coasts. Around the nation tomorrow and showers are expected across the nation. A top of 20 degrees in Sydney, Adelaide should reach 21 and a hot 34 is predicted for Darwin. Moving back to Queensland and tomorrow expect a top temp of 36 in Mount Isa. Mackay should reach 29, Rocky 32. Finally, the three-day outlook for Brisbane, a top of 24 degrees forecast for tomorrow and Wednesday. Thursday should be mostly sunny, reaching 25 degrees. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.